you for the opportunity uh, all to give in to us to present this research report. Uh, the two part report is uh, a living document that look at the holistic view on CSER development and suggested a guideline for development, strengthening lessons learned from national practice, peer to peer collaboration, regional practice, while leveraging the response and resources from international arrangement via CSER network and capacity building partners. Um, I talked about a living document because it has allowed us to learn from what have happened so far and introduced topic for future work area. Uh, many, many hands make light work, they said. Uh, the GFC and uh, its project oversight groups uh, supported the work. Global Affairs Canada sponsored it, regional CISO organization and many friends from the community provides input and help us to reach out to teams and provide many kind of assistance uh, to what you see as report. Um, this report has put together a multidisciplinary research team members. So they are Professor Bassi, he will not be with us today. Uh, he is a research professor at the Center for Digital Forensic and Cybersecurity at Tallinn University of Technology in Estonia. Dr. Onal Tata, Assistant Professor of Cybersecurity in the College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security and Cybersecurity at University of Albany. Dr. Sherif Hashem, a full Professor of Information Science and Technology at George Mission University. He is also a member of First Board of Director. And Dr. Kalim Usmani, a experienced security professional and responsible for more issues, computer emergency response team, and, and myself. So the agenda of today will be as follow. Uh, a presentation of the report and methodology, then you will have uh, some intervention from a few of us, and then we will open the floor for questions. On this note, uh, Dr. Tata, uh, you may want to take the floor and present us the, the methodology and the approach. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jean Robert, for the introduction. Uh, I shared my screen. Uh, can everyone see the screen? Okay, no. perfect. I can start. Uh, as Jean Robert said, in this uh, session, we will share the findings and the reports of our GFC and the Global Affairs Canada funded project and the approaches and practices for increasing the maturity and capabilities for CSERs, national CSERs in the emerging economies. In this project, we aim to create a tailorable guide for emerging economies to develop or improve their CSER capabilities in an affordable way to respond to the evolving cyber threat environment effectively. In this project, we first identify the current national CSER state in emerging economies, what services they deliver, what are their personal capacity, technical capability, technological infrastructure, legal base, and whenever applicable, uh, their governance structure. And then we identified the services which the emerging economies, uh, CSERs, plan to deliver or expand the capacity of the, the services in the next five years. And then we mapped each CSER service to the required knowledge, skills, and abilities, and also the technical tools. And then we identified the uh, affordable trainings and tools to develop this capacity in national sea source. Uh, the important thing is this is for uh, aimed at the emerging economies, but the outputs of this report can be used by any sea source. In our methodology, we first conducted a desk review and analyzed what are the previous works, what are the available resources, and, uh, and then we collected data by surveys and interviews. We uh, collected data through surveys from uh, 16 uh, national CSERTs in emerging economies, and then we conducted 10 follow-up interviews. And then we validated our report before it's published by the subject matter experts. Uh, the output of this uh, project uh, uh, are two reports. The first one is a literature review, and the second one is the, the tools, trainings, 
and knowledge, skills, abilities, tools, and trainings for CSERT development, plus the best practices we identified and also the recommendations. The total of these two reports are around 100 pages, so it's not um, possible to, to share all the details in this uh, presentation. But uh, if you want to visit the reports, uh, the links of these reports are available on the on the conference webpage the, in the on the abstract of our presentation. Now I will briefly share the outputs uh, and findings of our reports. The part one, the first report is a literature review. In this report, uh, we discussed the CSERT maturity models. Uh, these maturity models are very useful to see where you are and then plan where you want to be. SIM3, NSS maturity models are two of them we discussed in the model. So how CSERT can review themselves and uh, plan uh, the future. But these maturity models uh, do not provide an answer to how to improve uh, an, a CSERT capability. Okay, where you are and where you wanna go, you can plan it, but how to do it, it is not, uh, you, it's not something that you can get these maturity models. So we provided in, the, in this report, the organizational values, models and processes, and also the national international and regional exercises. And uh, we relied on the, the reports and the guideline documents from GFC and TFC CERT and other uh, organizations uh, to show the guidelines and best practices. And also uh, in the national practices part, we uh, shared different and some innovative funding uh, mechanisms the national CSERT created to sustain their operations for how to access the regional resources or how to create a pipeline of CSERT experts from the universities. This kind of uh, ne specific national practices are also discussed in this first, re first report. The second report is the current state and future protection of the national CSERT in emerging economies. Uh, we conducted a survey and we shared the survey results and also, uh, also the interview results. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we conducted a survey to understand which services those CSORs deliver and what type of technical and organizational capabilities they have and what their medium and long-term goals and their best practices in capacity building. Uh, there were uh, 28 respondents to our survey, but when we eliminated the incomplete ones and the repetitive submissions from the same national CSORs, uh, the result, it resulted in uh, 16 final uh, responses. And the national CSERT representatives who responded to the survey had a very good understanding of the technical and organizational aspects of the national CSERT services, in addition to a sufficient grasp of the national needs of the corresponding country. So even though it's just 16, but they are uh, experts, so the validity and uh, is very high of the survey. You can see the list of the, the national sea sorts uh, responded to our uh, survey. As you can see, it's a very diverse group. Some of the national sea sorts was established almost 15 years ago, and but some of them are very uh, new, established in 2020, 2021. And in terms of geographies, you can see mostly in Africa, but there are national sea sorts from Asia, Pesh, Pacific region and Lat uh, Latin America regions as well. So it's a very mixed group. And when you look at the global cybersecurity index ranking of uh, these uh, national CSERs, some of them are in top uh, 40, but some of them are uh, around 100. So in terms of uh, cybersecurity development index, it's also a mix. So we believe that the responses uh, reflect the, the, the current situation and the future plans of the, uh, of the uh, emerging economy national sea source. I will share some of the, the survey results here with you before going to the conclusion part. Um, 11 of the 16 national CSORs indicated they do not have sufficient staff and 10 of them indicated that their staff 
staff are not sufficiently trained. So this shows that why this project and these reports are very valuable because these uh, guidelines will help them to uh, show uh, or plan uh, training their uh, personnel. And uh, nine of the national CSOs indicated their staff members, they need more staff members to provide a better service quality. And uh, five of them indicated uh, they have sufficient staff, but they need to increase the qualifications, technical and uh, soft skill qualifications of their uh, personnel to deliver a high quality service. In terms of technical skills, the top uh, skills uh, in demand are, the highly demanded skills are malware analysis, industrial control system, ICS and SCADA security. And uh, 11 of the 16 CSOs indicated their staff needs to improve the cyber threat monitoring and analysis skills, and 10 of them indicated they need to improve their staff's skill for digital forensics, penetration testing, data analytics, and programming skills. So these are the skills uh, in high demand in this emerging economy national CSOs. We know that technical skills are very important, very, very important, but they are not just uh, the they are only a part of the work, the soft skills, because the national CSIRs, they're always dealing with different stakeholders, national, international, and regional levels. So they need to have good uh, uh, soft skills. And when we surveyed about the soft skills, eight of the national CSIRs indicated that they need to improve the written or oral communication and relationship management skills at the national and international levels. And six of them indicated that their staff needs to improve their ability to cope with stress and problem solving. When we look at the tools they need, uh, the highest demand is cyber threat intelligence feeds and the malware analysis, reverse engineering, and stakeholder management. These are the, 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 the tools uh, they need at the highest demand. Some tools challenges. Uh, 13 of the national CSIRs, they do not have enough budget to buy high quality tools or uh, to, or to uh, conduct their operations, to sustain their operations. And 12 of them said they use open source tools in production environment. Four of them also indicated they prefer not to use or use the open source tools just for testing purposes, while the five of them uh, indicated they prefer open source tools rather than the commercial tools. These are all important inputs uh, to figure out which tools and trainings are more appropriate for these emerging economies in the, in the next part of our report. Um, majority of these platform, uh, in terms of trainings, uh, although a host, of, a host of free and affordable training platforms exist, national CSIRs, a majority of them, they do not utilize platforms like EDX, Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, and uh, similar platforms, but most of them use FIRST, Africa CERT, and ITU trainings. And there are also some existing arrangements with organizations like SENS, ICS Square, and CompTIA for national capacity building to access these uh, trainings in an affordable way. Um, we also conducted interviews with uh, three of the national CSORs and uh, several uh, subject matter experts to figure out the best practices and get a deeper understanding of the survey responses and also figure out the best practices, find out the best practices in national CSIRT capacity development. Now, affordable tools and trainings for national CSIRT development. Because of the time constraint, I will not gain uh, the full details, but I will share how we identified and how we presented this part in our report. First, uh, at first, we used the na uh, first, uh, first CSIRT services framework. There are five service areas, and we used uh, these service areas and the services under each service area as our uh, baseline. And then we used also survey results to see which services uh, are in high demand and which services uh, the emerging economies, national CSIRS want to deliver in the next five years. 
And then we used the National Institute of Standards of Technologies uh, Cybersecurity Workforce Framework to map the required knowledge, skills, and abilities for each service area. And then we identified tools and trainings for each uh, service based on this knowledge, skills, and abilities and competencies. So it's a very systematic way. And uh, the, the, the list of the tools and trainings we provided in our report is not an exhaustive list, but it gives you a very good starting point for developing capacity in emerging economies. We also identified several innovations in our, uh, through our interviews in national CSORT capacity building, and uh, we provided several uh, recommendations, such as creating a pipeline of cybersecurity workforce with a connection with universities and academic institutions and leveraging public-private partnership and very innovative funding mechanisms and knowledge transfer from other CSORs in the region or from the regional or international cooperation, cooperation and also getting some funding in CSERT establishment uh, from regional and international organizations to create their first services. My colleagues uh, will give some uh, examples of these uh, innovations, the details of this. Um, before passing the microphone to my colleagues to give the details of these innovations and uh, best practices, I want to say thank you uh, to Global Affairs uh, Canada and GFC to supporting this research. Without their support, this, uh, this research will not would not happen. And also the national CSERs who responded to our survey and also the subject matter experts who uh, interviewed with us, uh, we interviewed with them and uh, they provided excellent insights to our report. And finally, the, the members of the project oversight group for their feedback to improve this report. Now I want to pass the microphone to my colleagues, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sherif Hashim, to share about some of these innovations in CSERT capacity building. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tatar. Um, it's really a pleasure to share with you the results. And I'd like to highlight a few, uh, I mean, issues when it comes to establishing, uh, especially CSERs with uh, national uh, responsibility. Uh, sometimes it is challenging in emerging economies uh, to, to reach out, you know, agreements about the mission and the objectives and the, the scope of work. Uh, so um, uh, one of the lessons learned from especially uh, cases like in Egypt, for instance, the Egyptian CERT started as a sectoral CERT, and we have seen today how sectoral CERTs work. So it started as a sectoral work, I mean, CERT within the ICT sector, uh, funded by uh, and supported by the regulators. So again, we, we tried to establish this within a framework of, I mean, uh, the regulator. However, it is distant from the regulatory activities, which was quite challenging. But uh, being part of the regulator, we, we had, I mean, Egypt CERT had uh, the available funds to pursue its work. Uh, it is very important also, uh, once uh, you have the high level political support, uh, that you uh, identify core activities and core services to be provided, managing expectations and, and really walking you know, uh, one step at a time uh, is, is really important. And uh, starting with the basic services and instant uh, handling and management, uh, the cyber forensics, uh, malware analysis, vulnerability assessments, uh, and pen testing were like the bread and butter of many CSERTs uh, across the globe. So that was really important. Uh, and, and to move forward uh, by having a tailored solution that is scalable and uh, building capacity was critical uh, at the beginning and, and moving forward. Um, and many emerging economies and, and low income countries, they suffer because of, you know, you have the brain drain within the country and outside the country. So how to build, you know, enough uh, a pool of experts and professionals uh, was quite challenging at the beginning when EG CERT started in 2009. And uh, there was an innovation there. Uh, a, a national program was launched because of lobbying from EG CERT. Uh, it was supported uh, at a high level within the ICT sector, and it provided training for over 220 uh, professionals from 
38 organizations, not just in the ICT sector, but in the financial sector and other critical sectors as well. Uh, that program resulted in more than 179 professionals received multiple certificates from SANS uh, over a period of a year and a half. So immediately we jump started, you know, the available resources uh, and uh, it created partnership that lasted for years to come. So building trust is key to the success of CSERTs and that act of, you know, innovation and building capacity at the same time, building, you know, the network of partners, 38 organizations, government, private sector, academia, across different sectors was really critical uh, in the, uh, for the success of EGCERT. Uh, to have, a lot, uh, I mean, to, uh, uh, synergies with other CSERTs was also critical. We have had a relationship with the Malaysian CERT, with the US CERT, with CERTs from Europe, uh, uh, AP CERT uh, from Asia and Africa. Uh, EGCERT, uh, EGCERT had had you know, a lot of cooperation with African CERTs, with Arab CERTs, uh, so it, it was really a give and take. Uh, at the beginning, we were taking more uh, support, uh, then later on uh, also exchanging and supporting uh, other African uh, sea certs. Uh, I say we because I was responsible for uh, the, I mean, uh, the team responsible for launching EG cert uh, um, uh, over uh, 12 years ago. And um, uh, I overlooked its uh, activities within a national uh, responsibility. Uh, uh, technology transfer is key, building trust. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad to see, you know, a lot of uh, emphasis on building trust. Uh, trust, uh, you earn trust. It's not something that you can buy. You can buy tools, you can buy, you know, uh, software, but uh, it, it, building trust is critical to the success of uh, uh, national CSERTs. Uh, I'd like to pass uh, the floor to my colleague, Dr. Kaleem, uh, uh, who has, you know, uh, also a unique experience from Africa. So Dr. Kaleem, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sharif. And uh, first of all, I'd like to, to, to thank uh, folks for uh, giving us an opportunity to uh, talk on this uh, particular interesting uh, project. And as my uh, colleagues have been uh, talking about that, what normally uh, we did uh, in terms of looking at the uh, uh, increasing maturity and cap capabilities for uh, CSERs in emerging economies. So uh, in fact, in quickly, what I wanted to uh, add uh, that in terms of uh, services that, uh, which services uh, we have uh, found uh, that they are the most basic uh, services uh, as our study and, and also the, the priority uh, is uh, development to improve a CSERT uh, service, let's say, within uh, these uh, particular search. So as I mentioned uh, that we, uh, let's say, interviewed uh, 16, uh, uh, let's say, CSERT, and uh, 10, one of, uh, 10 of them were from Africa, three from Asia Pacific, and three Latin America. And, and the, 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 let's say, framework which was used uh, in order to uh, let's say, uh, scan their services were a uh, first a CSO services framework. And as we mentioned into our presentation that it, it has uh, five main areas and, and, and these five main areas, let's say stands over security event management to uh, knowledge transfer. So basically what we uh, did is that uh, we have, uh, let's say, uh, taken all 21, uh, let's say service areas it means sub-service areas out of, let's say, these uh, five main uh, service areas, and we we we, we scan through, and and then uh, we uh, what we found is that there are varying uh, maturity levels uh, for the different uh, CSERs which we have, uh, uh, let's say, scanned through, or let's say, we, which we have analyzed, and also uh, some of uh, them uh, in terms of the services they do not offer uh, is a security event management, uh, information uh, security incident management, and also uh, vulnerability uh, management. So uh, these are the services which uh, most of the certs uh, they, they, they uh, are looking uh, forward to offer these services. Basically, uh, why uh, it is uh, so that they do not have a required uh, capacity uh, in order to, let's say, offer these services to their constituency uh, members. And also something what we, we found is the uh, gr greater emphasis uh, which is given onto uh, situation analysis and, and, and the knowledge uh, uh, transfer. So that was something, again, uh, what we uh, have uh, noticed. And, and, and also it is important to note that information uh, security event management and situation awareness categories uh, do an important interest among new services uh, once we, let's say, uh, have uh, tried to uh, 
uh, even uh, talk to uh, some of them and they, they want to move around, let's say, uh, these, these uh, services uh, in, in, in future. And one of the bottlenecks which they, they have been saying, because uh, we also uh, interviewed different people and, and we saw, uh, for example, Togo, we took the example of Asia Pacific, where we uh, uh, look at uh, Samoa and Wanatao and, and uh, <clears throat> other, uh, let's say, uh, countries in Asia Pacific. So a similar kind of, let's say, uh, uh, impression we got uh, from the experts whom we have been uh, talking to. So, uh, and, and that's another reason could be a poor staff qualification because ultimately what we need to have is that we need to have the capacity for this stuff in order to deliver uh, these uh, uh, services. So, and, and, and also as Dr. Sharif mentioned that uh, one of the reasons also that they do not have a qualified, let's say, uh, experts available like in many other countries. So this also something what we saw uh, is, which was, which was uh, there for, uh, let's say, um, uh, C-certs as, as a challenge in order for them to, let's say, offer these uh, services. But again, uh, what also, uh, let's say, uh, we, we saw the interest for, for uh, different, uh, let's say, C-certs start uh, their services on these lines, like incident and vulnerability handling advisories and, uh, and alerts and, and, and warnings. I mean, this is again, something on an improve, uh, let's say, an enhanced mode intrusion detection, security assessments, malware analysis, and, and uh, cyber uh, threat um, monitoring. So uh, the, the, these were uh, some of the, let's say, uh, uh, services where these users, they want to build up uh, their, uh, let's say, uh, capacity. And, and, and also uh, something what we uh, have noticed is the, the limited budget, because I think we, we spoke about the budget and there are many uh, suits that they do not have enough budget in order to have the infrastructure in order to, let's say, uh, have this, uh, uh, this services uh, started. So uh, the, these are the few things quickly we, we noted. And also I think uh, one of the things and I, I take away from is that all those, let's say, emerging uh, economies, those who are building their research, so they should be starting with, let's say, a service by service rather than uh, coming back to, uh, let's say, uh, many services at the same time. So this is much easier to manage. This is much uh, easier to, let's say, uh, uh, offer to their constituency members, and that will be also easier to maintain the quality of the service. So looking at the time, maybe I'll stop here and I'll pass on the floor to uh, uh, my, uh, let's say, uh, colleague, uh, Jean Robert. Over to you, Jean. Yeah, uh, thank you, Karim. I will go very quick to give the opportunity for question if there are some questions. So uh, as a regional research organization, uh, being able to uh, outline uh, challenges and opportunity. For example, Justin talked today about uh, some of the advantage and takeaway from related to the host organization is very key to our work. Um, some, of, some of the challenges that we were able to see and that we try to outline from what a couple of teams are doing and how they can uh, learn from each other, how they overcame, overcame those different challenges and turn to opportunities are things around um, competing priorities, resource mobiliz mobilization, skills development, retention, uh, funding, sustainability, and highlighting the approach taken by some teams like uh, AGSER that you, you have heard about, but also teams building private pr public private partnership to uh, leverage the constrained resources that they have makes uh, an interesting point and also a learning opportunity. Uh, for various uh, uh, development program within emergency search. Um, some of the uh, few also area of improvement that we have noticed from uh, those teams are reflected through various exercises, uh, strengthening partnership with uh, capacity implementers, peer-to-peer uh, -peer collaboration, uh, being able to leverage from those learning opportunity and developing knowledge modules, skills uh, driven from the ecosystem and also working uh, with various organizations where they can identify, find resources, uh, create opportunity for uh, joint development, inter and internship and mutual assistance. So on this note, I will give the floor back to you, Chris, and we'll be happy to 
uh, answer any question that the community might have. Then thank you very much. Thank you, Jean Robert. Thank, thank you, uh, all of the panelists there. That, that was really interesting. As I said, I, I have I, I have strong views on on building certs in in countries and emerging economies and. It's something we need to do. It's something we need to help doing, and, and it's really interesting to do that. So I'll be I'll be taking a close look at that report. And Sharif obviously is on my board, so he tells me what to do anyway. So you know, between us, we'll be we'll be making a lot of use of that. It's really really useful. Thank you, and really interesting to hear your thoughts and the survey results. Um, those reflect stuff I've heard, but they're, they're, you know, it's always good to get that reinforced. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. If anyone has any questions, feel free to put it in the chat channel. I, I'm not seeing any at the moment, but we can. We, answer them during the next presentation.